Settle in class, we'll be diving straight into this one. Today's lesson is on where to start when designing combat encounters. There are a few different questions every good encounter has to answer. Who are you fighting? Why are you fighting them? Where is this fight? And what makes it special? These all need an answer, and the answers should inform each other. First is the simple one, who's involved? This is where most people start. If I'm starting here, it's because I have an enemy in mind who I'm wanting to use, or I found an ability combo that just sounds fun. This is often the starting point for bosses and big bats, but sometimes it's just as simple as I saw space clowns and had to use this nonsense. Second is why the monsters are fighting them. Basic, but important. The golem wanted to keep them out, but the bear was just hungry. That means it runs at low health and can be distracted if they throw food or kill something big as they pass. A cultist might want sacrifices and try to take them alive, or just want something the party has and might try to buy it off them. People don't usually attack others for no reason, even if that reason is just a love of suffering or fear of the big bad. Look, I know it's usually for meta reasons like I need my party to go somewhere or I need my party to stay away, but you should have an in-world reason too. That's especially important if they're going to keep coming up. Third is where are you fighting, and yes, that really does matter. 3d6 kobolds could be in a swamp or a temple or a mine shaft, and each of those will have completely different terrains, layouts, tools to work with, usual creatures, tactics, counters. Think of a catapult trap. They step on a tile and it launches them 30 feet up. That's annoying in a field, terrifying on a mountain, and just cartoonish in a 10 foot tall hallway. Finally, what makes this fight special? Now don't get me wrong, I'm a firm believer in the basic palate cleanser fight to let the party unwind. It demonstrates the baseline of a monster so your players will appreciate it when you twist it later. This is not that. This is your special equipment on enemies, a condition that you discovered and want to build an encounter around. Traps or tactics or vague ideas for abilities. Zones of dead magic littering a field. I am a major advocate for throwing layer actions everywhere. On initiative 20, a trap activates or the river pushes people down or wild magic strikes. Sure, legendary creatures control the weather in their lair, bending it to their whim, but it's not like they hold a monopoly on the wind. However you wind up doing it, all four of these aspects should be answered. Who, what, where, and why. You Usually you'll already know two or three and you're just filling in what's left. You already know they're at the coast, and you know they're tracking the dragon to steal its gold. Therefore, encounters will likely be the dragon defending its gold, or creatures that hired or intimidated into doing the same. It's a default you can change, but you start off with most of the blanks already filled. Even in modules, you'll usually find yourself doing this to some degree. But if you're starting from nothing, I find that the best place to start depends on what you're looking to build. If you're writing a new arc of the campaign, or at least a new quest, you might want to start with why these encounters are occurring. Let's say a snake cult is trying to take over a city to retrieve their sacred amulet and get fresh sacrifice. Sacrifices. This tells us what we might be fighting. Let's say a spirit naga with its minions. They'll ambush them on the way to the city. So let's say a lightly wooded road near a stream. Spirit naga are wizards, so for the special something, let's change up that spell list. We'll have this one put a glyph of warding with pyrotechnics in the middle of the road. Whenever the party steps on the glyph, they'll all be blinded, giving the cultists a chance to strike. And for extra spice, let's say the party was hired by a caravan to keep people safe. Maybe the party can fend off the naga and its minions, but can they keep all the commoners safe while half of them are blinded? That's good if you're trying to build up a region, but let's say you aren't trying to do that. You're trying to build a set piece encounter or make a villain or you just found some cool monsters. In those cases, you start with a monster, especially if the creature is powerful. You know something like a hag, for example, is going to bend the whole area to its will. Where exactly is that area, by the way? Most monsters will have a usual listed biome, but maybe it's somewhere it shouldn't be. And if that's the case, why? Is it after something? Or maybe it was pushed out of the region and it's trying to find a way to take it back over? And if it isn't a lair, then make that do something, even if it's not under their control. The adventurers might have caught the hag while it was brewing a potion. Without her to mind the pot, it spews out random effects over the whole area. Speaking of area, what about starting with one? That's the usual choice for a pace setter encounter. The ones you use to string your party along from place to place. Let's pick a coastal region for this example. What lives in the coastal regions? The Dolphin Delighter. It's perfect, it can blind people, and I'm sure the name will get a great reaction. But why would they fight a good thing? I mean, other than being prejudiced or bloodthirsty. In our case, it's corrupt and partnered with the sailor they hired to take them to the dragon's lair, both of whom are secretly working for the dragon to pick off anyone who tries to find it. It's a good setup, but what makes it special? Well, the boat is faster than your average kobold, so falling off can make you swiftly fall behind the party and at the mercy of the dolphin, which is a bad thing. Dolphins don't have mercy. The abilities of the monster can do the trick as well. When the dolphin pops up and blinds them, it gives the sailor a great chance to push him overboard. If you need more, just throw in some marrow. Their harpoons can drag people into the water and leave them stranded. Now those are for if you're coming up blank on an encounter idea and just need a starting point to piece things together. But what about the last one? The special something to spice up your encounters? I'll probably devote a whole video to it at some point, but it's hard to plan for inspiration. After all, the thing that makes it special is you. Rogue ideas that you came up with, or built upon, or blatantly stole. Whenever you encounter an idea, one that inspires you, start there and build something around it. That passion and excitement will improve 
studio design so much more than I ever could. For example, I thought up a crystal that alternates between anti-magic and wild magic. So screw what I was doing before, that sounds awesome. But where can I fit it in? Well, they were in a forest, and something that wild works great for goblins, so maybe they're controlling it. Yeah, 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 one's running around it in circles, and if they yell, Booyah, it does wild magic, and if they yell, Gaiyo, it's anti-magic. But why does the party care? They tied the local hedge mage to it, thinking it'll make the magic faster. And the town really needs him back, or maybe they need information from him. Something I recommend if you're still struggling is to just go through all your monster abilities and try strapping them onto other monsters, or lairs, or gear. You can do the same thing with magic items, or just go through games and movies. As practice, you can try to shift it into something new, or flip it on its head. And when you do find or come up with something new, write it down. Before long, you'll have pages and pages of things to draw on. And there's no shame in recycling gimmicks. Especially if it's for an area, that can just be a theme. Maybe the goblins have taken over a whole mine where those crystals are, and the next encounter has two, or the effect comes from the walls of the room and switches whenever struck or the boss has a giant one that she can channel through. Or maybe she has a bunch of minions that are turning it on and off, so whenever it's her turn she gets extra magic, but when it's not her turn they switch it off so the casters can't cast their spells. It might be a little frustrating for your casters, but there's a very clear thing that they can do to make it stop. And then when they do stop it, the casters can get their revenge. Though there's no shame in scaling it back, it can be as simple as fighting on a cliffside, or a chance of other creatures sensing your presence when a spell is used, or everyone getting an ability you just ripped off another creature as a boon from their god. Whoops, turns out that all of these monsters have a charge ability because they worship a deer god. Try putting little special things like this in your encounters. Just something basic. It'll come easier in time, I promise. Though I will admit the game's a little rigged from the start. I mean, eventually you'll have so many things on your list that it'll get quicker just from not having to think about it so much. Even if I'm wrong, you'll at least have a nice backlog to draw on when you're struggling. Anyway, with these four basic points, we now have all the ideas to put together an encounter. And thanks to the last video, we know how to make sure that they're right for the party. Now you're probably wondering, how do I actually start stringing these things together? Finalize things and make them into dungeons and adventuring days. Well, I'm working on it. You might just have to stick around too. Next video might be giving my other series some love or start a new series. You don't know me. If you'd like to know me though, we got buttons for that. Press them and stick around. I'm not going anywhere. Seriously though, thanks to all 60 of you for sticking, uh, wait, wait a second. 2.30? Um, hi. Uh, <laughs> I guess the 100 sub special's not getting out on time. Well, uh, thanks for sticking around. I've still got plenty in the works. That's the good part of being so small. Lots more room to grow here at Goblin University. Stopping the monsters from Goblin U. See ya.